Hey, good morning everybody. Today is day four of the 10 Days to Safer Skin Care series and today's topic is about one of the biggest things that I look for in my skincare products and that's parabens. Now parabens are in things like sunscreen, body wash, um, shampoo, conditioner, um, lotions, creams, I, you know, certain cosmetics, deodorant. And the reason that basically what parabens are is they're preservative. So the main goal for companies is to make sure that their products have a long shelf life, right? And this just kind of got a little light. I want to make sure that you guys can see it okay. Um, I'm not going to mess with it. But anyway, so the goal is to make sure that these products have a long shelf life because if they're going to Target or if they're going to Walmart, they need to make sure that they can last a year if they need. Um, but have you ever like pulled out a lotion out of underneath your cabinet and you're like, oh, I've had this for a while. When does this expire? And you turn it over and there's like an expiration date four years from now. It's crazy. And, and you know, they also advise not to use mascara that's expired um, because, you know, they the shelf life is only designed to last so long, but that's because they have preservatives in them like parabens. So most of the products that we use have a really long expiration date. And the other thing with parabens too is that it's not just necessarily in our skincare products, it's also in about 90% of our grocery store products. And the neat thing, the fortunate thing for us is that we have the marvelous FDA, I say marvelous, but we have the FDA. And the FDA actually regulates how much, how many parabens we can have in each product. So it can tell, okay, well, you know, we're only allowed this much in this ingredient, this much in that product. And, and the FDA will regulate that for us as far as what's considered safe. But in the US, there are no laws that protect the skincare industry. So there's no laws that say you can have this high amount of parabens or a low amount of parabens in our products. There's nothing that regulates our skincare industry. So we have the FDA that regulates safe limits on our foods, but the skincare has no restriction whatsoever. So, you know, and, and you know, the old saying is everything in moderation is fine. Well, which is great because everything in moderation is good. However, or not in good, it's good, but it, it's not as bad for you. However, when you are constantly using things on your body, on your skin, in your food that have parabens, that high level of parabens that we're getting on a regular basis can cause some serious damage and we end up with this overload of, of preservatives. And we don't even know it because we don't even know that we, we don't really even know that we're using it because how many of us actually look at the ingredients in our skincare products? You know, I know there are certain things that I won't eat, so I'll turn over a package and I'll look at the ingredients and I'll say, okay, well, this has this, so I don't want that. I want something safer. Um, one of the biggest things that I look for is natural flavoring because natural flavoring is another form of MSG. Um, but in our skincare products, for example, I don't think I have any non-beauty counter products here, but um, when you turn it over, they don't necessarily have the ingredients on it. So you'd either have to go online to look up the ingredients, use the EWG app to scan it to see its safety. Um, but the crazy thing is that, you know, we're not required to label what's in our skincare products. Um, so everything in moderation is fine, but why are parabens so dangerous? The number one reason that I have a problem with parabens is because they're a known hormone disruptor. So how many of us have hormone imbalances? How many of us have had or suffered with PMS symptoms? Um, and then on the more serious end, endometriosis, PCOS, and infertility. So we don't think about what we're using in our skincare products, what we're using in our shampoos, and our skin is our largest organ, and we're soaking up all of those toxins. But we have these physical symptoms, and we kind of don't know why. Now, one of the craziest things to me, and one of the most sad and most unfortunate things that I want you guys to understand about parabens is that they are directly linked to breast cancer. In 2004, Britain did a study of 20 women and 19 of them had their tumors removed. 19 of those tumors ended up showing positive for complete parabens. Paraben is hiding in breast cancer tissue. It hides in breast tissue and can cause cancer. Um, and one of the biggest reasons for this is because parabens actually mimic estrogen in our body. So we end up having a surplus of estrogen. And that surplus of estrogen can actually increase breast cell division and it can also increase tumors. Now, if, you, if this doesn't really hit home for you already, 
One of the crazy things to me is, and, and, and extremely unfortunate things is, have you ever had a mammogram or have you ever had a lump in your breast and called your doctor to see what it was only to have them, you know, give you the run around about, okay, we're going to do this test, got to do that test. Have you ever waited for the results from a test that you think could be cancer? What is that like for you? What is it, what is it like to sit and be unsure? I may have breast cancer. I'm just waiting to hear, to find out. And, and then all of a sudden getting the call that you do. One of the things I want you guys to take away from this video is you have to start paying attention to what you're using. And it, you're not, you may not until you have to make, you have to take, you have to wait that two weeks or you have to make that call or you get that call. It may not be a priority for you until then. And unfortunately at that point it's too late. And my biggest thing is prevention, injury prevention, cancer prevention, I eat as healthy as I can. I try to do things that bring me joy. I journal, I meditate. I want my body to be loved, to be nurtured, and I want to give it the best things that I can give it, right? And I'm willing to compromise my aesthetics. I'm willing to compromise my body fat. I'm willing to compromise wrinkles around my mouth, wrinkles on my forehead. I'm willing to compromise that because I know in 40 years, I'm going to still be alive and I'm going to still be cancer free when unfortunately there are other people that won't be. And my goal is to not necessarily, you know, nitpick on like, Oh, I have a wrinkle here. I have, I'm going to do Botox up here because in my opinion, in the long run, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for longevity. I'm going for health. I'm going for safety. I don't want to die from cancer. I don't want to put my family through that. And I don't think that you do either. So this is why, this is one of the biggest things with parabens is that I want you guys to understand that it is in virtually everything. I'm gonna post in the comments um, or maybe just in the regular post, I'm gonna share with you just the things to look for. Um, it's in Beauty Counters Never List, but but one of the biggest things is just, you know, it, it's like propyl paraben, methyl paraben. It's, it's like everything that ends in paraben is, is a preservative and what they're using for um, to, to increase their shelf life. So when I talked about that, that study that Britain did in 2004, where 19 of the women that had breast cancer tumors showed parabens, one of the, one of the important things to know about that is what that shows is that the paraben is absorbing into the skin and it's not able to be broken down by your metabolism. It's staying as a whole molecule in the body. And we can see that in breast cancer tissue. And that's, so profound to me because most of the time our body can defend, our liver can defend against certain conditions or certain ingredients or certain toxins. But this is something that's important to understand is that the parabens are not breaking down in our body and they're not getting cleaned out like they would if you know the liver were functioning properly. So it just proves the chemical's ability to penetrate the skin and stay in the breast tissue. Now, on a less serious note, Parabens have also been um, linked to immunotoxicity, so a decrease in your immune system, an increase in um, autoimmune disorders. It's also been um, linked to neurological toxicity, uh, neurological symptoms like anxiety, depression, brain fog, memory loss, confusion, Alzheimer's, dementia. Um, we talked about the reproductive issues like PCOS, endometriosis, and infertility. Um, but also it can, it can um, relate to skin issues too, like eczema and psoriasis. So one of the things that we kind of have to gather is take all this information that we learn from all these dangerous ingredients that are in our skincare products and say, okay, what am I willing to compromise and what am I not willing to compromise? And just kind of decide what's important for you. And look at the symptoms that you have already. Look at you know any eczema or any psoriasis or brain fog and, and start trying to clean up your diet, start trying to clean up your skincare regimen and, and really just kind of work your way into making healthier choices and making more positive choices. Um, I have a couple of things right here I'm gonna actually save for the next video, um, but one of my favorite products with Beauty Counter, and just so you know, Beauty Counter, the whole, the whole thing behind Beauty Counter, and, and this is why I ended up choosing them, was um, in the United States, we, well, in Europe, they ban about 1,300 different harmful or questionable ingredients. However, they don't ban parabens, which is crazy because, in my opinion, they should, especially with infertility issues the way that they are right now. They don't ban parabens. In Canada, they ban about six to 700 different harmful and question, questionable ingredients. 
So what they can and cannot use in their skincare is regulated somewhat. In the United States, we ban 30. 30, that's it. We're only required to ban 30. We're also not required to test safety of our ingredients in our skincare products. So we can put formaldehyde, we can put um, plastics, we can put anything you want in a skincare, I mean, minus the 30 that they say that you can't use in our skincare products and we can just lather it all over ourselves. Um, so the, the, the reason I settled on Beauty Counter was because number one, they do all the testing for me. So I know what I'm using is safe because I know that they're not ever gonna use parabens, phthalates, um, any fragrances or anything like that that's gonna cause hormone disruption. But the other reason I like them is because they actually ban 1,500 harmful or questionable ingredients in their products versus 30, which the US is required. So their whole entire line restricts those 1,500 harmful or questionable ingredients. So I don't have to do the research, I don't have to do the studying, and if I do, all of their ingredients are posted right on their website, right when you go to buy the product. So this is one of my favorites. This is their cleansing balm, and this is my go-to for like overnight masks, taking off my eye makeup. Um, as you can see, it's just kind of a balm. It looks like, I don't know, like a chapstick or something. Um, but it's loaded with antioxidants and different vitamins and um, cranberry seed oil and it literally is like, oh my gosh, it, it's amazing. So I take off my makeup every night with this. I use the counter match cleansing milk and then I use this around my eyes. Um, it also can be used as a moisturizer. It's great for eczema and psoriasis. Um, it is, um, uh, it's awesome for sunburns. Like if you ever got a sunburn, you can put it on your sunburn. But I use it as an overnight mask for hydration because I have really super dry skin and I live in Arizona. So I use the, um, the Beauty Counter uh, cleansing balm probably two or three times a week just for hydration. So, and again, like I said, it's, you know, it's clean, it's safe, and I don't have to worry about what it is that I'm using. So I can shop away and buy everything that I need and I don't have to worry about it. So um, that's today's video on parabens. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and you learned something and feel free to ha ask me any questions if you have any. And as always, I will post the link to the website so you can poke around and see if there's any safer skincare products that you wanna add into your repertoire. All right guys, have an awesome weekend.